Okay, hello. Two loose topics uh, from chapters four and five on uh, testing and on uh, selection techniques uh, that I didn't really feel warranted a whole big lecture, but I wanted to talk about. Uh, fair employment practices. Uh, this is always a confusing topic for students. And uh, I want to just touch on this and then touch on uh, banding and race norming, which are even more confusing for students. So fair employment practices cover hiring, firing, and promotions. Uh, and the law says that you cannot be biased against a protected class in hiring, firing, or promoting people. That's fair employment practices. And hopefully by now you should have memorized the protected classes, uh, race, ethnicity, uh, etc. so on. So let's say that you get fired. Uh, there are okay reasons under fair employment practices for you to get fired. If you are fired for the use of a crazy test or a stupid test or a bad test, then that's okay under fair employment laws. Uh, if a, there's a reason that you're being fired uh, under fair employment practices, it's okay as long as it's crazy, stupid, or bad. The only time one of these reasons becomes illegal is when any of these reasons or any of these tests are biased against a protected class. So, I guess examples are needed and necessary. So let's say that you come to work one morning, and uh, you know you uh, and it's in New York State, which is not a at-will state, and I'll explain that in a second. And your boss looks at you, and you, your boss says to you, "I don't like the way your face looks. You're fired." Now think for a second: is this a legal or illegal firing? Well, as I said, because it's in New York, it's a legal firing. That is, employers can fire you uh, for reasons like that. They don't like your looks, or they could give you a test about uh, uh, horoscope and astro uh, astronomy, astrology, excuse me. And they say, well, you're a scorpion. I don't like you because you're a scorpion. This test tells me you're a scorpion, so I'm going to fire you. And again, that's a legal firing. It's a crazy, stupid reason. They're using an astrology test, which is unscientific and bad, but that's okay. It's legal to fire you for that. Uh, and I always have to say, just as long as those crazy, stupid, and biased tests and reason are not biased against a protected class. So here's what I mean. Let's say that you come into work and your boss looks at you and says, I don't like your face, you're fired. I don't like your haircut, you're fired. Uh, so let's say that your boss does that and you notice that he does that on several occasions to several different employees. And you look at the number of black employees and black employees that have been fired because the uh, uh, you know boss didn't like their faces, and you look at the number of white employees and the white employees that have been fired because the boss didn't like their face, and you discover there's no adverse impact. And if that's the case, then that is an okay uh, criteria for firing people under fair employment practices. It's I, I you know I don't think it's right. Some states don't think it's right. New York thinks it's right. Uh, but it is a legal under fair employment practices method. Now, let's say that you have a test, like the horoscope test, and you give it to all your employees, and you say, I'm going to fire all the scorpion, Scorpios or whatevers. Uh, and uh, you do that uh, because you believe that Scorpios or Scorpions or whatever uh, are bad employees. And that's the purpose that you're using the test for, getting rid of those Scorpios. Uh, however, let's say that, unbeknownst to you, a lot of black employees are Scorpios, just randomly. And it's unknown to you, there's no real correlation between race and horoscope, but just by bad luck, uh, the, you know, most of the uh, Scorpios in your office were black and so they're fired. 
now using that test becomes illegal under fair employment practices it's kind of hard to you know, you have to really focus on it to realize that that's what uh, the EEOC laws are about okay so given that background uh, the textbook says that empirical demonstrations of a test having validity in terms of predicting job success does not uh, guarantee that a test will not be declared to be discriminatory for example the GATT B which is a really famous cognitive test shows similar validities for whites and minorities but minority uh, scores were lower on average than uh, white people so in the past uh, you know the government recommended race norming which is adjusting minority scores upwards to equalize hiring rates and unfortunately or for the use of this back in 1991 uh, the Civil Rights Act declared race norming uh, illegal because it was racist in itself so because race norming is now illegal in order to use these tests which are biased against uh, certain people like certain protected classes now some companies uh, and organizations are using banding uh, and it's not it's a gray area of whether it's legal under EEOC law or not uh, you know but it's being used and so now we need to discuss what exactly is race norming and what is banding so let's talk about race norming uh, let's say that you have two students applying to college and uh, you know you're looking at their SAT scores uh, you know so uh, one applicant has an SAT score of 500 the other 545 and uh, you know we know that on average white students reading scores that is SAT reading scores are on average 528 uh, black students reading scores are 429 uh, so there's about a hundred point difference so given that given that white people on average have higher scores uh, on the SAT reading test if you just accept people into college based on SAT scores you're gonna accept more white people than black people there's gonna be adverse impact and it's gonna be illegal so what do you do uh, in the past what you do is you race norm and oh, for some reason this didn't work out let me uh, get my pen now five 45 so since there was a 99 point difference between black student scores and white student scores on average you norm black student scores by adding and now let me get my well I don't have a oh, laser pointer time by adding 99 points to the black uh, student scores and so you don't add anything to the white student scores and now once you start doing this and over the long run on average your use of SAT reading scores will not have any adverse effect against black people okay that's race norming and of course recognizing that uh, you know black people need help is one of the things that caused this to be deemed illegal and so you want to use SAT scores to select people into college so how do you still use them well you use banding and in banding what you do is you create bands and so what I've done for the SAT scores is I've created 50 point bands that is uh, from 0 to 50 is band number 1 from 100 to 150 is band number two I left out some things here but you know we'll get to that you know that doesn't really matter uh, band number six is 500 to 550 and so what you do then is you are not going to use the raw SAT scores but what you're going to do is you're going to use the SAT bands and so the black student Oh, I want a pen the black student is in band number six and the white student is in band band number six and so both get equal weight in the admissions process 
So that's how banding works. And uh, you know, again, uh, it's bending the rules so you can use a bias test uh, in order to make kind of unbiased uh, application and job hiring decisions. And I used a you know a college example, but it's the same laws and it's the same practice in terms of workplace employment tests and employment hiring. Ooh, that was a cool transition. And then the other loose topic I wanted to talk about was the different selection techniques and uh, how valid they are. And again, validity uh, means you know the ability to uh, you know uh, you know we're talking about criterion validity here. So we're talking about the tool's ability to uh, predict job success or you know job performance based on scores from these selection techniques. And this is the results of a meta-analysis, uh, which that is a statistical technique that uh, takes many different studies, individual studies, on a certain selection tool, such as cognitive ability. And they statistically average those uh, you know, different studies together. And uh, you know, in a different class, I'd talk more about that, but that's all you need to know. So uh, the chapter is talking about different selection techniques, like cognitive ability, work sample, structured interviews, job knowledge, uh, interviews which are unstructured, biographical data. So let's say somebody goes uh, for a job interview. They give them uh, either a cognitive ability test or an unstructured job interview, or they uh, look at, at their education, or they give them an interest test, like uh, the Holland Inventory, which is what you're taking through ONET. And then you take that score and you correlate it with job performance on some job uh, you know, appraisal uh, you know, measure. And these are the validity ratings or the correlations. And as I've been saying, correlations below 0.3 are low, between 3 and about you know, 4.5 are moderate, and then these are strong correlations. So as we can see, measures of cognitive ability predict your success at any job better than reference checks or how many years experience you have in the job or education. Wow. And as you can see here, structured interviews are much more valid than unstructured interviews. Which the test, uh, which the textbook has been telling you. So I, you know, that's not. This isn't in the textbook, and I thought this was really useful information so that you could understand the relationship between all these different selection methods. All right, take it easy. Bye bye.